Killer Killer Podcast. KillerKellerOfficial.com. You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label. Organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton and other sustainable materials. 2019 is their 20th anniversary year. Join me with THTC as a Killer Keller podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp and street culture. THTC, eco-fashion redefined since 1999. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct. Big shout to Graffiti Kings. We are direct on Zoom. Uh, I think we're going to Phoenix, Arizona, if I'm right, or East nah, West Coast. Nah, man, San Diego. Close, close. Damn it, San Diego. I haven't lived in Phoenix in since 2000, which feels like the last time we spoke. <laughs> yeah, for real. But I thought you went back for a piece, and then, well... I, nah, I could... nah, nah, nah. I, I much loved everybody in Arizona, but I, um, I went to L.A., and then... I was like, I, I, you know, LA for 13 years. And then I was like, I need to move somewhere in California, close to the water, but not particularly LA. And really it was just because of the traffic. I couldn't deal with the traffic. So well, DJ Z trip, ladies and gentlemen, he is inside the yeah, place. Yeah, by the way. Yeah. We just dug right into <laughs> just it. Jumped straight. <laughs> and you've got your beer. Yeah, man. I was like British accents. I got to get a beer um, to, to, to hear it correctly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, to balance out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If I have the right pint, then I can, I can, I can speak the lang- lingo. I love the fact. That's good, that you, man. That, yeah, I'm, I'm great, man. I and it's again, it's so good to see you, brother. I mean, it, too, I think the too, last too. time we did see each other must have been the Shifting Gears tour, to 20, 2005 or something. Something like that, man. Jesus. Yeah, Yo, that's way too long, man. Bro, I, I think we bucked around to your house in LA maybe two or three times, but I'm talking like extensively, like on tour or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was always it was always based around a tour or a show or something for sure. Mm-hmm. So, what an amazing no. time we had! Wow. Yeah, man. Yeah. Crazy, just crazy. Yeah. You know what I loved? Though? You know what I loved about um, every time we would link up is, um. It was just always like go and 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 you just we both knew the position to play yeah. sonically. So you could put us in front of anything, anywhere, and we were just we just inherently knew how to sort of make it not only work, but like we would both walk away going like, oh shit. <laughs> that was yeah. still like yo, yo, that happened. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So we we I mean there's very know. there's very few very few people that um I have that chemistry with. I mean you know, relatively speaking, I, I have it with a lot of people, but I'm in general, I find that there's very little chemistry between, um, artists, uh, like that. So I mean, I have it with some, but you're definitely one of those people. Like if someone would be like, yo, Keller wants to hop on the mic right now, like, let's go. It's just like, I, it's, let's go. I appreciate you saying that mostly because I, you know, you're, you're like the mashup Don. So you work with variables and sonics and, you know, you you blend and mix and you work very on the cuff. You, you, you freestyle a lot of your stuff. When I jump into that situation, oh, it's, it's game, it's game over. Cause like I, we're from a hip hop culture. We love the freestyle. Yeah, man. That's, that's the, that's the epitome of it. It's like, I feel like if I don't have enough of that in the diet, I'm, I'm not eating well balanced. Right. Yeah. So yeah, 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 man. It's part of our, it's part of our DNA, isn't it? Yeah. Without yeah. a doubt. Um, and, uh, and, and trust you, you to be totally green screened up and ready again, technically thinking forward. I haven't, I knew, I knew I didn't have to worry about you for a second, brother. <laughs> Little artifacts popping up here and there. If I yeah, go yeah. too fast. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. All that good stuff. All that good stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, cause I'm just in the office right now. I got, I got like shit background. So I was like, let me just slap a logo up and it'll look Killed cooler it. than, yeah. Than whatever I got laying around in the house. Killed it. Um, this is where the this is where the internet is the strongest. So I was like, let me just go to that room. Uh-huh. It's the closest to the uh, to the Wi Fi. So I was like, it's pretty strong here, and we should be good to go. Yeah, but yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. shit for it's shit for aesthetics. Like it looks, it does. It looks like an office. You look, you're looking good, man. You you made the call, baby. Do not 
play Netflix. We need full Wi-Fi. <laughs> we need full, <laughs> yeah, full yeah. bandwidth. Yeah, yeah. Um, any any neighbors who are have you know jumped onto my Wi-Fi, you know, who are downloading porn or whatever, I've like stopped all that. <laughs> Stop that. Just so I could do this. Look at my fingers. Look at that. That's fucking creepy. That's just real. That's like something out anyway. of like a nineteen sixties horror. <laughs> <laughs> What's that webbed that webbed guy? The, yeah. the black one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, listen, I uh, you know, it's where the magic happened. Those studios and offices, and right now, that's kind of the that's the gameplay, right? You know, we're not going yeah. anywhere, so we're working within. But I've always, always known you as a um, a record creator first. I know you're a house, you know, a, a, a good house party DJ and a, and a pioneer at that. But um, I think the first time I actually saw you, you were on um, some back jumps, old VHS back jumps episode. Oh yeah! Oh shit, man! Wow, yeah, that was like the run through Europe. Um, yeah, there was all the like hitting all the all the spots, and that was like the battle of the year days, That's like right. going around and, and DJing the the b boy circuit, and um, yeah, man, you know, I was catching fame off of cassettes, like I was hustling cassettes back then, and um, some people had heard them. I think it may be like a a rock steady anniversary or a b boy summit or one of the events out here, uh-huh. and. Cause that's where everyone would come from everywhere. Like the, the B-boy events were only, there's only like four or five of them. Right. So yeah, everybody from Europe and Asia would come over here to, to compete in these events. And like, we would DJ those things and hustle the tapes. And I remember that some people had heard what I was doing and were like, we got to have him over in Germany and, and do, uh, you know, DJ at our events. So mm-hmm. I went and I, and you know, pay, they paid for it. That was like, I think that was, yeah, that was like one of the first times I ever traveled. Um, was basically through the b-boy circuit so going over to berlin and stuttgart and and clone and and um hamburg hanover like all through germany right then up to the uk like that was all my my first experiences were um were going there and like you know on low budget but uh but man they showed so much love and i brought over like 300 cassettes right and i was like trying to hustle them off everywhere i went i like made just enough money to like you know, to make it work. But yeah, anytime someone was like, Hey, we got a radio show or a video thing or whatever. I was like, let's do it. Like I, I was just hyped to be yeah. outside of the States doing, doing hip hop, you know? So all those old videos, um, it's just young me, like experiencing it for the first time. You know, it was, it was, it was a good time, man. And that's, that's essentially what, you know, from that, that angle and that point of view, you doing mixtapes and the, the, the consistency in your club sets, yeah, man, it's quite easy for you to get catch fame. I say easy. That's a really flippant thing to say, but you'll get one coming <laughs> from when, when, when you've got the tenacity that you have, and you're stepping into an arena, like you say, the b boy arena. They're like headstrong, diehard. You've got to know your shit to be jumping in there. Yeah, yeah. But as a DJ, yeah. you killed it because you, you, everyone absorbed your DJ sets, and rightly so because you had everything ready built. It was like, it was made for you to just jump on the throne, right? Well, I feel like, I I feel like I, to be honest and to be fair, I stole a page out of the, the founders, right? Like Bambada and Cool Herc and Jazzy J and Flash, um, you know, and a million others. But those guys laid the blueprint for taking music that wasn't, necessarily known or 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 uh or or built into the the sonic landscape that people had associated this stuff with like there might be the james browns and the funk and everything else but like all of a sudden Kraftwerk, this german electronic band Mm. used in there and it's like what that's weird but it sounds dope Mm. or uh some prog rock band or something some you know so they had a really great drum solo so there's all these sort of weird um other bands and groups and things outside of the fringe of of funk and groove and an afro beat and like you know movement reggae like all this movement you know that was predominantly black culture i mean you know if you want to boil it down but like sonically black culture music was the was the heartbeat and probably 80 percent of this music but all these other little fringe things were fused onto it and i realized that as I was starting to make a little bit of noise in um, like, you know, sort of 
you know, mid, mid, early mid nineties. Um, I started to see more and more DJs only grafting towards the soul and the funk, mm. and the, the proper breaks. Okay. That's an R and B break, or that's a funk break, or that's a, you know, if it was a rock break, it was a straight, pretty straightforward sort of rock break, or it's like, you know, all yeah. the classics, Jimmy Castor, it's just begun or Apache incredible bongo band. But a lot of them weren't going outside of the fringe and gathering this other stuff. And mm-hmm. I think there's also sort of a, a thing of like thinking that it has to be, excuse me, from the seventies, you know what I mean? It has to be old mm-hmm. to be considered classic. And, and while I subscribed and did all my studying of all these breaks and all these producers and all these different records, I was still like, well, why can't a record that just came out yesterday be infused into that? Why can't this record that has a really fucking nasty break not be mm-hmm. infused? And because some of those beats, when when B boys would hear them, they it would be unfamiliar to them and it would kind of rub them wrong for a second. Because you know, if you're playing breaks the right <laughs> way, there's the guitar or the the music part that has nothing to do with where it's going. Yeah. It's about to go to something magnificent, but that moment, those four or eight bars, if you it's throw it, I had them. many times, I had many times where I'd throw some fucking guitar twangy weird thing that was like, what? Like, I was just grooving you <laughs> through that, and I would get them to stop, and they'd look at me, and I'd look back at them and be like, this yeah. way, this way, and as soon as it would hit, they'd be like, oh, and then they would get in, it's like, exactly, it's like, because that That's whole sick. thing of breathing... You got it. You got to challenge it. You got to breathe new life into these arenas because I was starting to go to these events and hearing people just like getting by on playing just the ultimate breaks and beats collections only. Yeah. And those are classics. Those are, you know, you got to have those in there. There's some of those tracks are just amazing tracks that you have to, you have to have in the mix. But my thing was bringing, you know, this many records in the crate of this many records. And those were mine that I found that weren't true and tried and tested in the arena, but they were in my local area or I just knew them to be dope breaks. Like I turned a lot of people on. I remember I found a, uh, this, um, a belly dancer break that I found that was like, I remembered, you know, all the, all other DJs are like, what's that? It's like, that's what you want. I want other DJs to be jocking what I found. Just like, I want to be finding and hearing like hearing all these UK breaks that I didn't know about. Like, yeah, I don't know if you remember Lacey, DJ Lacey, but he was a homie. Of Rest in peace. Yeah, he was, he was the, one of the first dudes who I linked up with, him and his brother Aiden, um, at his house. Stayed at his house, and we'd go digging for records, and, and he was turning me on to all these breaks. I was turning him on to breaks. Like, and so we had this network of like DJs that were mailing shit to each other. Like, here, let me mail you this cassette. Let me mail you this record. If you oh. find one, I'll find one and mail it to you. Like, Kids, that's how it was. Kids, for those of you who don't know, that's like having a WhatsApp group. That's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, the, for the higher echelon DJ. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was completely that. It was it was a club that had to physically mail physical copies of things to to, to other people. That's cold. But yeah, I mean, it, I, and I don't mean to just go on and on about it, but it was it was a really amazing time because it was my first time being outside of of the bubble of sort of America and the states and that culture and going to another. Um, a whole bunch of different cultures within Europe yeah. and everything and, and trying different food, meeting different people, seeing different people's a take on graffiti, on B-boys, on, yeah. on hip hop, hearing German rap for the first time, being like, what, what is this? Like, you know, just the whole thing of like, oh, it's outside. This is, this is outside of where I, where it came from. Cause it was also sort of starting to like mellow out a little bit in, in the States um, as far as the passion and I found mm. that at that time, Europe really, like the graffiti scene in Europe was yeah, out of fucking control. Crazy. They were just Crazy. crushing. They took what we had and just turned it into something else. I was like, wow, this is They the kind of shot on the rest of the world, like Dame, Lumet, oh, Delta. Come like, on. Ooh, yeah. Battered it. Battered yeah. it. Yeah. But you're, that, energy that, that energy that you brought in that first time around, and again, just to highlight again the the... the the depth of this character we're talking about now, ladies and gentlemen, is fucking DJ Z trip, all right? Hello, Cool J's DJ, you know, you name it. Mash, mash up Pioneer. Like, your energy that came through on those first ventures, I felt like when it came to that, especially for me, it being introduced via the Back Jumps German, because I was on tour with Vadim at the time when I first saw this 
And bear in mind, Battle of the Year was also pretty new to me. I felt like you were you were in unison with with my perception of what was new. And every time I saw you do something like that at Battle of the Year, where you were doing cutting edge breaks, it made the event seem unique. It made the event seem cutting edge. You were going to, and I, I get it because America, okay, had the backpack thing going on with Rockers, but I, I feel you. It there wasn't that four elements thing going on. So when you came over and you were from the states, it was just like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, man, that's right. That's right. I, I completely forgot. You hosted those fucking things. I'm, it's all coming back to me now, man. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that's how far away it is. It's like, I'm trying to, like, when did I, when did I meet Keller? Like, where are we? I'm like, wait a second. I remember him being on the fucking stage. Like, all right, this next round, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. That's right. You were, yeah, you were fucking, we were, it was just a wild time, dude. Wild. It was such a wild time. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Um, Jesus, and uh, you, you were like one of the first I think you were one of the first outside of outside of Craze. In fact, you, me, and Craze had a session at Miami Winter. Oh yeah, you remember that? Um, yeah, you were one of the first people that I actually, you know, chopped it up with. And we, like you say, spontaneity with us was just like, yeah, let's just do it now. Come on, <laughs> let's go. Let's yeah, go. yeah. That was that was what I loved is finding other people who not only had the passion for it, but. Um, we're unafraid, you know what I mean? Like just yeah. to dive in because there, there was a level of that to me is where I felt, you know, over the years I've, I've likened this to comedy and, and th there's so much similarities in what we do and what comedians do. Explain and Explain well, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, just to finish the thought though, it's, it's about once you get to a point where you're on stage and you're riffing, Mm -hmm. And you're making it up as you go along and you're playing with the audience. You know, yeah. you have your, you have your set that you have planned, but this is you like really, you know, flexing your, 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 your craft. To me, that's what it, the, the epitome is like. You can't get any closer to your, to your source than that. But um, to take mm -hmm. a step back, the, the analogy I have is that um, for DJs, you know, you're, you're up there. It's just you. And the audience. So our, already it's one person and, an, and a group of people. Mm. And you're giving your art through a medium that is kind of established and people know it to be what it is. And so if you can push the boundaries in that medium and, and stand out and have a voice and have, a, have a, an angle, um, it's crucial. Yeah. So for me, people like George Carlin, probably one of my favorite comedians Ooh. ever. because Yo, you in introduced me to George Carlin. We were watching on the bus. Oh really? Yeah, you introduced me. That's to awesome. Cousin. That's awesome. That's so amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's so amazing. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, like you know, comedians, man. Um, uh, I would learn so much from them because of their approach, comedic timing, waiting for a joke to land, and the and the and the the laughing to come back. And if mm. you time it right, you can get another bump out of that laugh if you say the right thing. And inflections and understanding pacing and understanding dropping a, a seed of something and, and coming back to it later and storytelling, you know, all of that. So that's, the, I mean, on stage, there's a million of those things coupled with the fact that as a DJ, if you go and you play, say I go and play Seattle and I come back there and I play Seattle again in six months, I got to remember the set I did the last time I was in Seattle because I can't do old material. I've got to come with new material. So it's, it's important to understand, like you can't do the same set twice in the same spot. So understanding coupled with, if you get new music or new tunes, you got to infuse new bits into your comedy, just like you would, you know, with a new song. Yeah. If there's some, something that's going on socially, Hey, you know, everyone's talking about COVID now. now well, okay. You got to have your COVID jokes or, Hey, uh, this is, you know, the Trump, you got to have your Trump lines, whatever. So it's like to be able to take things that are happening current and flip them and, 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 but doing it in a very fast pace is crucial. Um, coupled with hecklers, you know, the people who want to request a song or are fucking with mm -hmm. you, you got to figure out a way to, to neutralize them, but also not like turn the, the place off. You know, if, if a joke bombs, you got to have another joke that, you know, same thing with a tune. You got to have the right tune. If that tune bombs, there's a lot of elasticity in, in the performance as a DJ that you would have as, as a, as a, a comedian. So I study a lot of wow. the comedians and wow. even take it a step further. We travel alone. We're in a hotel where, you know, I've, I've actually been on flights with other comedians where it's like, you know, I've seen I've seen certain people in the same circuits. You know what I mean? Whether I know them or not, it's like, oh yeah, that's so and so. Oh, that's so and so. And it's like, it's just very interesting. The dive bars versus like the Netflix special versus the you know. There's just 
Yeah. There's so much to it. And so I learned a lot of that. So being able to, 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 you know, hang out with Dave Chappelle and, and, and do, um, a juke joint with him and, and, um, and shout out to DJ trauma who, who connected those dots, but like that stuff. Crazy. Um, yeah. You know, Russell Crazy. Peters, you know, back in the day, I, I remember I, I, I met Carlos Mencia way back before, um, you know, all the controversy with him, but like, just just connecting and, and speaking to different comedians and understanding their, you know, I'd always ask them questions because it was very much about like picking up on, on, you know, so I, that's, that's, that's sort of, it's something I carry around. I study them a lot. I try and pay attention to everybody. And there's certain comedians who I think kill it. And it's also about, you know, socially saying something. You also want to, you know, if you play the right, the right tune at the right time, you could trigger something and you kind of want to get people to think. So there's, Mm. I've done that a lot with my music with, with playing stuff around, you know, the Obama uh, days when I did mixes around that and sort of like getting people to sort of engage a little bit more than just, you know, why the chicken cross the road kind of, you know, mm. anybody can do that kind of shit. So it's Ooh, like, yeah, a yeah, lot to it, a lot to it. I mean, not to get super deep on it, but no, no, no. It's your podcast, my brother. It's your podcast. It's, well, it's yours. It's yours. It's yours. <laughs> It's but. ours, I'll tell you what, this is this is a uniting of uh, of old friends, brother. Uh, do you feel like speaking, by, by by the way, by the way, speaking of comedians, while we're on comedians, yeah. Um, we have a, a common thread through Pat Oswald. Do you remember Meredith? Yeah, Mar- Meredith Salinger, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Meredith married Pat Oswald, and the other day we were I was on something, I was I, I whatever it was. Hold time, but Meredith. She, Damn. Yeah, yeah. So she hit me up. She was like, "Hey, like, I, I think I, I was hustling some new hoodies or something, and somehow our paths crossed in on Twitter." And she's like, "You may not remember, but I met you with Kella back in the day at the show." Amazing. And I was like, "Oh, I'm like, that's how," because I, I always saw her face. It's like, I know she's an actress, but I'm like, yeah. I, she looks like more than like I think I feel like I've met her or deep or something. And she solidified it because I completely spaced it, but. Um, yeah, small world. Uh, she was like, yeah, I met you with Kella. I was like, oh, that's right. Kella. So just small world that that's happened a couple, crazy. You know, a couple months ago. So shout out to Meredith. And then I hit you up now. Yeah. Meredith is a Don. She was in Dawson's Creek or something from, you know, that went that old soap opera back in the day. Yeah. Something, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Wow. And that's small world. That's crazy. And she, she's, de- she's married to a comedian. To, to Pat Oswald. Yeah. Who's another, like another comedian in the greats of comedians that I, I you know, I'm always, try and pay attention and pick, you know, just, just absorb. I used actually one of Patton's um, bits in one of my first streams where he did a little, a COVID thing, like right at the onset of this whole thing where he was outside doing sort of stand up comedy to like the neighborhood. And there's like one person walking by. It was just very sort of, you know, dry, but funny moment, but sort of like, you know, just a, a sort of like, Oh shit. And I use it at the beginning of one of my sets for insomniac. And I think that's kind of maybe how it came back around. Like, so just whatever, full circle moment. Anyway, oh, you were saying. That's crazy. No, uh, no, uh, we'll, we'll stay on this. The serendipity of it all. Like, yeah. with, with, the, with, with the world being the way it is, I mean, I'm not sure how, connectivities isn't like, it's like, you know, what, two degrees of separation of that. But there was a real, you know, six degrees back, back in the day, probably only as far as six years ago, was a real thing. Like now, when I think back to how, that connectivity came about how we connected how things and in your you, you spoke of your ten, tenacity um at the start and how green you were with the whole european scene you know there's a lot of there's second and third hand conversations that we never hear about or that you never saw me watch your vhs video or you mm-hmm. never know who and just all of a sudden, in a weird way, those small little incrementations make for these situations to occur. Isn't that crazy? No, I love it. I think it's great. <laughs> and it's interesting because something could sit and lay dormant for years. Meredith is a good example. Like, mm. And it just sort of came back around recently. But the connections of, of these things, and, and, and it just makes you realize sort of how, how connected we really are and, and impressions Sometimes when you feel you're doing something that, you know, this goes out to any creative. It's like sometimes mm-hmm. you're, you feel like you're putting your best work out there and, and it's, it's just not getting received. But sometimes, you know, think of any, any artist that, you know, over the last 20 years that made a song 
that didn't do shit when it hit, but somebody picked it up and put it in a commercial or and all of a sudden it's, it's part of the, the, the dialogue and, and is now a classic and, or, you know, think of, you know, any song that like Kanye sampled or, or Jay-Z sampled or mm. whoever that's like fat boy slim uh, praise you. Right. Yeah. Like that song, like, you know, the original of that was, you know, that will probably would have laid dormant had he not went in and recharged that and it became a thing. And then it's in all these commercials and now it's a dialogue and people, you know, that kind of thing is yeah. as an artist, you just have to think that sometimes it's just about just get the work out. Don't worry about oh, it man, hitting. So Don't right. worry about who it hits. Just do the best work you can. And eventually people will, will, will get, you know, will get on board, but don't make it about like, Oh, likes or, mm. or make it about, uh, you know, I've got to, I've got to hit this certain goal for it to be, you know, warranted yeah. as good or bad. Like that shit is, you know, I, but I think that that's kind of the concept that I know I come from. I assume you do too. And I think anybody before the era of likes and, or, uh, any yeah. metric of, of how a, a, a project would be received outside of, you know, mm-hmm. oh, I hustled a couple tapes or whatever, but I, I think that you, you have to not worry about that because the good shit will always rise to the top. Yeah. And I think timeless music, if you make music, that's really good. It'll, it'll just be timeless forever. And that to me is kind of, that's always been the goal mm-hmm. It's like, let's, mm-hmm. let's not try and be so concerned with like capturing the zeitgeist sonically, but like, let's just make it dope where I could play this in 20 years. I mean, there's still yeah, fucking yeah. songs that I play that are 20, 30 years old that sound like they came out 10 years from now, you know? Yeah. It's a, it's, I'm stuck on the process. I love, I, I am addicted to it. And yeah. I think that harks back to a time where, uh, yeah, like you say, the algorithm, the analytics, the AdWords, none of that. No, it shouldn't make any difference because if you're loving the journey, the chase right. is always better than the finishing line anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I've always said that. I, I, you know, I, and I see people sometimes try and cut the corners of trying to get to the end result the quickest. And while in some instances that's important, I feel like the journey is where you really get the, you know, context is everything. So mm. like understanding, you know, walking the same path that they, the, the people did before you and receiving the knowledge and getting those morsels, like that's, you know, there's something about stopping and smelling the roses for that moment that makes yeah, the whole man. thing come together. And I, I feel like if you're not making art with that in mind, you're missing um, a big part of it. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. certain, certain people, sometimes they'll go their whole career and wonder why didn't it connect or why didn't it happen? It's like, well, maybe you never took time through your process to like get that yeah. because that's once that, once you unlock that, you kind of can't go back. I feel like you can't unsee that. And I'm, I'm trying to constantly be in contact with that higher power, the, the inspiration, the third eye. Like I'm always trying to connect to that. Cause to me, that's where my best, ideas mm-hmm. come from it's not when i plan shit it's it's the spontaneity and think of all you know going back to oh what God, we were talking yeah. about earlier you know being able to to riff and go out there and just come up with shit sometimes you're doing something and because you're in the zone and because the universe is speaking through you you come up with some fucking crazy thing you're like i would not have came up with that on my yeah. own had i not been forced into this position and now that's i take that and i put that in my bag and that's a that's a new tool. That's a new weapon I have when I have to, you know, Oh shit, that nothing's working. Let me go into my bag and pull out that thing that, you know, it's yeah. like, you're, you know what I mean? Yeah. I do know what you mean. I do know what you mean. I have those epiphanies fairly frequently and there's, no, there's n- yeah. nothing beats it in the world. It's almost like you unplug for a sec. Mentally you go into this like meditational mm-hmm. zone doing something and yeah, you, it never leaves. Once you've got that rhythm, it never leaves you. Has it? Yeah. Yeah. And just being able to receive that stuff and be open to it and, and foster that sometimes, like even in the most uncomfortable situation, um, I think it's, I've learned how to harness that a little bit and make it work towards my benefit. Mm. And even, even to the detriment sometime of the team around me where I feel so strongly about it, and everyone's like, that'll never work. Or that's mm. bullshit or whatever. And then <laughs> I do it and then it connects. And then everyone's like, 
He's a genius. It was genius. Totally genius. We do it all like, along. You fucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you fuckers. Come on. Call it what it is. You fucking fronted. Like, come on. <laughs> but whatever. I mean, you know, it's got to, ultimately at the end of the day, I've got to stand behind it and feel good about it. And not to say that every every endeavor I've done has been 100%, but I feel my batting average is, is pretty high in the sense that I, I have a high threshold. If I think it's dope, chances are I, th- I think my fans will think it's dope too. And I wouldn't want to give them anything that I didn't feel hit a certain mark, you know? You've so. got a hardcore, a hardcore out of the regions of hip-hop fan base. you got like this, they, they're Z-Trip fans. You know what I mean? It, it's, it, and I learned this firsthand when being on the road with you. Like they're, I, 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 it's hard to define them apart from they're, they're Z-Trip fans. You know what I mean? They're, it's 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 it's. I, I'm I'm curious. Describe a Z trip fan. Uh, I'm, I'm through through your lens because this isn't like a loaded question. I actually mm-hmm. I'm curious. I'm curious. I, I think they're they're in that kind of flying lotus meets ninja tune meets. Uh, you know, they have a they have a a very uh, amoeba music sensibility to them. They know, <laughs> That's great. That's is great. that is that would that no that's great that's great that's a great analogy you're you're doing fine <laughs> yeah it's there and you know but we but, will hang on a second hang on a second hang on a second hang on a second note to we will let we will let him live we will let him live <laughs> yes yeah, we'll let him live <laughs> <laughs> no that's great I think that's awesome an amoeba mentality go on yeah I, yeah, yeah. Go on. but you still have the hip hop. <clears throat> you still have the hip hop crew. Um, Shifting gears was crazy as a tour because you had like Dreads from Black Sheep, you had Bus Driver, you had me for half a stint. You had, I mean, you had a, a collection of all different characters that were so devoted hip hop. You, you're, you're able to keep your hip hop roots, but and and still be able to make music for your audience. It's almost like you're the you're like the hip hop spokesperson for them. That's crazy. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. How'd you feel about that, Z? Well, I look, I I whatever it is, it's hard to quantify um and put into words, but I feel it. You know, I feel the I feel the connection to it. But you know, the way I look at it really, I mean, ultimately, to be honest, is I kind of feel like um and I still feel it to this day. Mm. I'm very much an outcast. You know what I mean? By default, like by default, I, I, a little bit of an anomaly in a sense, because you have certain DJs who define a sound or a, or a, uh, you know, a style of music, mm. you know, yeah. uh, Ronnie size, Dillinger, you know what I mean? Like I, I can say this about certain, yeah. you know, shy effects, whatever. I, there's certain, DJs who I'm like, you have a sound and a, and a style that is so connected to a certain thing mm. that, that I couldn't look at you and go, but I also know shy effects to be an amazing house DJ, or I also know shy effects to be an amazing, uh, uh, jazz DJ, you know, yeah. not to take away that, 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 that could happen because it totally could. And maybe I'm completely unaware. It's just never been brought to my attention. So therefore I kind of take certain artists and go, you know, you're this and you're great at that. But it, it, you know, to a degree, it just lives into that world. And, um, and mm-hmm. I think on one hand, it's, 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 your you're bigging that person up by saying you, you are the epitome of this style to me, right? You represent the style so hard that I can pin your name on the style and it's synonymous. But yeah. it's harder to take that same name and pin it on another style of like, you know, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Find, find somebody that's a completely different style and pin somebody on that. Mm. And for me, I try to feel like the outcast part of me is that it always mattered for me to be able to at least hang in each room, you know, each, each stage at the rave. I wanted to know that I could go there and not just play, but hammer it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, I want yeah. to be able to know that I could play a house set and crush it. I want to know that I could play a, a, a dubstep set and crush it. I want to know if I could drum and bass or jungle set and crush it. I want to yeah. know that I could play a hip-hop set and crush it. A down-tempo set and crush it. So, like, for me, 
learning and absorbing all these different styles of music was very much about it's just music and I want to represent each thing. So the outcast is that I never really, with, with the exception of hip hop, which by the way, if you really step back and look at it as a prism, hip hop is sort of like the, the thing that everything could go through and sort of shoot out, but it doesn't necessarily work the same way, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, if you turn it. So hip hop to me was the conduit that allowed me to find all these different styles of music, but bring them sort of through a hip hop lens. And therefore it allowed me to sort of go into all these different genres and fuck with them a little bit harder. And I guess the best way I could feel like I could equate it to is I saw somebody post the thing the other day of like uh, EDM Twitter or whatever. And they had like a lunch room with like eight tables. And there was like at each table, they put like three different artists and like, which table would you sit at? And like, they were very like, this is really dark, you know, rhythm. This is very yeah. sort of, you know, uh, soulful house. This is really sort of like, and it, it was all these different styles of, of EDM. And I, and I thought I could sit at any one of those fucking tables, yeah, man. Wild. I could sit at any, but the thing is when people think of me, they don't think of me as being a Don of a certain sound because I don't live in that mm-hmm. exclusively. So therefore I feel like I'm a little bit of an outcast where um, sonically, you know, I'm doing my own thing. And I know that I've got a fan base who, who are also outcasts in a weird mm-hmm. way, who okay. like all different styles of music. And therefore they feel they can connect with my energy and what, and my lens and sort of, and, and it's a little bit of like, you know, we're, we, we might have our own table, but we could also sit at every seat at the table, but we're also like not necessarily considered to be, you know, the dawn of any one thing. And that's mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, you're like a little bit of a roving sort of um, outcast, uh, you know, bastard child and that you don't really have a home. Hip hop is my home, but hip hop is also so interesting in the way it is broken into. Like, you know, I consider myself to be a very blueprint of hip hop DJ, you know what I mean? But like, would I, you know, could I hang with a, a 2020 hip hop DJ? sonically i guess i could mentally i don't know if i really could because i don't really i don't really i'm not as engaged with like whoever the the hottest latest is just because it's not my flavor but like if i needed to do a set i could dig around and and, and make it be yeah, dope would. you know what i mean but 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 the, the thing is i i've also never liked to be committed to one style because I'm very interested in music in general and different music makes me feel different ways and different. Sometimes I want to, you know, I want to hear heavy metal when I'm snowboarding. Sometimes I want to hear heavy drum and bass if I'm lifting weights or something. Sometimes I want to hear chill atmospheric shit. If I'm laying out by the pool, like it always fucked me up to, to when I would see people who are like dubstep one dimension. And you're like, how do you, how do you, so you tell me you listen to dubstep, like, you wake up in the morning and, and like when you're trying to chill, like it's just, it's just, <laughs> not it, I was like, I mean, I'm not, not to knock that. I'm not knocking that in any way. Like that's dope. But that's your, if you connect with it that hard. But to me, I feel like music is, is about connecting with all different styles. And so I've been preaching that and trying to fuse that into my mix since day one, because I feel like there are other outcasts out there like myself who feel and ride that way. But there was also a time too if you think about like early sort of pre mashup days where, you know, if you were into rock music and you went to a hip hop club and you played some rock music in the hip hop club, people would look at you and be like, what the fuck? Right. And the same thing would be the flip side. If you went to like a, you know, electronic club or someplace that was playing like industrial music and you played like, you know, a run DMC cut, people were like, what the fuck? You know? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there was this moment, there was a, a, a moment back in the day where, if you didn't commit to one style, you were looked at as like a weirdo. So I've always hung out with the weirdos. I've always had, you know, multicultural friends, different races, gay, straight, man, woman, transgender, whatever the fuck it is. Mm. You know, I've always had this interesting group of people, but they were so creative that it didn't matter who they were physically or what, yeah. what scene they came from. The fact that they, got it was like oh you're higher you're higher yeah higher consciousness so that's the table that i would always really gravitate towards and usually those are like 
people who you know have a hard time like being in crowds you know what i mean like they're just, just weird we're just weird we're just fucking weirdos man yeah. and like you gotta have your have tribe a hard time. You, you have to find your yeah they have so, to believe in the tribe you know what i mean so i i i feel like you know that's something that the people who follow what i do um are extremely empowering and giving me the ability and the power by following what i'm doing they give me the ability and power to continue down these roads that sometimes i'm like you know it if I committed to one style and really hammered out two or three records in one style, chances are I could, you know, I could probably get associated with that sound, tour yeah. that circuit, whatever. <clears throat> but you know, would your crowd get it? The, would your crowd get it? Well, yeah, I mean, they'd, they'd ride with it, but like they'd ultimately know, oh, he's just rocking with this for a minute. And yeah. I don't ever want to, you know, I don't think I ever really want to do that for more than one project at a time. For and then, sure. and here's here's the testament to it. Everybody was always like, "Yo, you know, if you, you know, it's always a thing of like, hey man, if you do the, you know, whatever at the time, if you do a be more version of that, you know, that'll get more airplay." It's like just because that was hot at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, never yeah. really subscribed to to that so much, but it was still able to play Coachella four times, yeah, play yeah, Lollapalooza yeah. twice, yeah. play, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Electric Zoo, Shambhala, you know, Big Day Out, whatever, all these different festivals also, you know, open up for Lincoln Park and do, you know, play a rock set for a rock crowd, play a, Crazy. a, a, Crazy. a bass set for a bass crowd, play a reggae yeah. set. I opened for Steel Pulse, I don't know, uh, you know, maybe a year ago, like these kinds of things where I can bob and weave and also still work with all the hip hop heads. I mean, yeah. touring with LL and being able to like commit totally to you know, being straight up on some boom bap hip hop shit. Like Crazy. the ability to, to, to bob and weave through these different um, sonic landscapes to me is really where I wanted to be. And the fact that I've been rewarded by sticking to my guns from early on has yeah. been great. And I will say this, that, you know, early on when sometimes you would dump the dance floor and people would look at you weird, but I stuck to my guns of like, no, it's all music. You guys just don't get it yet. When yeah. the massive things started to happen, I think people started to open up their their eyes and ears to it. But now, look across the board, and people are just you know, it music just, yeah. is celebrated, and and across people finally got there. I just yeah. saw it way way early, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that's right. For what it's worth. Yeah, for sure, for sure, uh, completely and utterly. Do you? I put this. Is there a method? Because I've always, I I've always felt, and this may may not be the case. I I always felt you were a good man of strategy like you had whether it was in business or whether it was in uh selection whether it was in genre the decision of the person that you worked with and stuff like that um not that it anyway it's contrived at all i i just found i i found in in especially talking to you and being in your company so much i i found the way that you think really interesting and i'm just wondering whether there was there's ever been um you know this extra layer of thinking that you have that you know the strategy of being a pioneer or something or the strategy of you know dominating a, a genre or releasing a record and that that you know it takes a certain somebody to get to the level you are so i'm you know i'm, I'm wondering if there's 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 a strategy there's there ever has been a strategy to any of these things well i i would be you know i'd be lying if if i said there wasn't but I don't think it's as flushed out uh, and rinsed out to the T. Um, you know, maybe it is per, per, you know, particular project, like something that's, you know, has a short shelf life of like, I'm going to do this thing in a, in a month. And so I have to meticulously calculate my way to get it to be what it needs to be. So when it happens, it's amazing. But once it's sort of ran its course, it's just lives in people's memories as like a moment. So there's a strategy in doing, you know, knocking down certain events, but, um, cause you've got to know when to jump off the ride as well, because if it is, petering, sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like so there's, there's a level, that, but I think, I think a lot of it is instinct. You know, a lot of it is also, um, you know, uh, sort of like hoping for the best, but planning for the worst, you know what I mean? Being mm. extra prepared, you know, a buddy yeah. of mine, um, told me, you know, I live by certain sort of codes that are like in, in, inherently embedded into my DNA. Now, after, you know, 
when you hear somebody give a, like a, a thing, you're like, I totally fuck with that. Um, there's a seven P's. Do you know about the seven P's? No, 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 I do. Tell me. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> oh, right? shit. So the seven P's, right? Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Come and on, this is dude. something that this is something that I'd been doing, but didn't really, it wasn't quantified in a way. And, and a Love buddy it. of mine, a buddy of mine, Joe, Joe, who was, was the tour manager for shifting gears. Oh my God. So remember, like Joe, dude, of yeah, course. Yeah, Joe. Yeah, yeah. that was Joe. That was one of Joe's. He brought that to me. I was like, Oh fuck, that's right. And I, it was something I had done, but I never was able to quantify it. So that's something I live by, you know, uh, hope for the best plan for the worst. Um, mm. you know, those kinds of mantras where you just like, and also committing to like when you do something and it makes you feel a certain way, you kind of remember right that way. first feeling. Right. Yeah. And yeah. you may go and like go down the rabbit hole of like tweaking snares and mixing things, or whatever, but like always be able to step back and look back at it from a first impression because yeah, that's, a, that's crucial. The first instinct is like, Oh, sometimes the demo is actually better than the finished product. You yeah, know what I mean? So, sure. That I think a little bit of self editing, always knowing where it's like, you know, being able to to throw a whole bunch of shit in it and then listen mm-hmm. to it for a minute and go subtract, 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 too much, too much, too much, and getting the balance right. But all those are things that are, I guess, part of the strategy, if you will, is just applying the things that I've noticed over the years to, you know, um, you know, LL brought something. You know, he's by the way an amazing. Um, mentor you know what i mean like just rolling with him for the past whatever eight nine ten years i I picked up so much game from conversations but also just Amazing. seeing how he rolls and just 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 being quiet in the room and just listening how does he um, roll how does he roll what's with know, with style and finesse yeah with walking style with finesse. a panther you know he's a he's, he's the guy is 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 non-stop you know what i mean and but like one of the things that his his um his grandmother used to always say to him, and it's, uh, I, I, I'm trying to remember if, if I can remember the exact verbiage, but the, the, um, I, I want to say it's even maybe a passage, uh, but it's, it's n- no matter, um, task, big or small, do it right. Or don't do it at all. Something to that effect. Nice. I, I, I ha- maybe haven't nailed it exactly, but it's You're that. You're dropping it's like, gems on this one, my brother. You but, yo, but, this, but, no. but listen, that one is so crucial because it's like, if you're going to do something, do it until it's done. Don't fucking do it because, oh, I, I check out. You know, it's like people who are like, oh, I'm working, yeah. but oh, I'm, I just clocked out. I'm done. No, yeah. it's never done until the job is done. And when the job is done, then you check out. And sometimes that, puts you, sometimes that puts you way over the board as far as overtime. Sometimes you get it done sooner. But mm-hmm. if you're gauging your involvement on the amount of time you're putting in versus the end result, you're doing it wrong. And so knowing where, you know, sometimes people get fatigued on a, on a project because it's, it's not panning out. It's not giving them the result they want yet. Mm-hmm. Or they like, to me, I've never, I, if, these are things that I already inherently felt, but he had a way to quantify it. So it's like, nice. you know what I mean? I found, I find that I'm, I felt like I was on the right track with a lot of things, but hearing people say them or picking up you know seeing somebody else do it makes me go there now i have a way to to verbalize it you because know or you've internalize it, it lock man. it in you've always had it i've and and that's why i question i queried the, the strategy thing but it's actually more like you say it's more spidey senses like do, and and that's 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 not that's inherent i don't think that that can be just picked up it, you know that intuition of work ethic is would like was your mom and dad were, were they quite were they work um were, were they bang into their work they did, did did a lot of what they did about rub off on you i i mean maybe uh, probably in some capacity but i think it was more i realized that when i started getting into into music and art my whole thing was how do i how do i how how am i able to do this all the time mm. and that that's the pay that's the payment yeah for sure what you make financially is irrelevant yeah, i mean yeah, it's yeah. relevant but it's it's irrelevant to the fact that i've been able to create and be around and absorb and process and digest and and um you know be synonymous to a degree with art yeah, yeah. and 
that was the goal. So to me, I realized that whatever it took and, you know, and, and it goes back to little life lessons of like, you know, you're digging for records. Mm. And my whole concept was if I see a record and it's in my hands and I know it's might be something I'll never see again, I need to get this record at all costs because mm. I may never see it again. And this is adding to my, to my pile, my legacy, my work, my, this matters to me more than, going to see that movie or yeah. going and getting a burger or going and whatever like this mm -hmm. matters. So yeah. sacrifice now, put it in the crate and eventually, you know, maybe I make a beat out of that record or somehow that record, you know, mm -hmm. the more records I have, the more my set can be, I get paid off of that. That's where the payment comes. So this yeah. sacrifice was always about whatever I have to do to stay here working it didn't matter. And when that becomes the focus, when the payment is, is being able to live and work in this environment and mm. that is that success, then everything else is just a bonus and help push you along. But that was always That's sort of deep. my, my approach, right. Yeah, it was yeah, like, deep. you know, from your first gig, it's like, you know, you learn how to negotiate, you learn how to, how to, get paid for what you're worth. You, you yeah. learn how to, you know, eventually equate your time and energy towards something. But ultimately, you know, you've got to be able to jump at any moment at any opportunity. You know I mean? You've got to be able to do that coupled with, you've also got to, you know, put yourself in uncomfortable situations a lot in order to learn the lesson, you know, mm -hmm. again, going back to co comedians, like go up there, you got to bomb. What great comedian hasn't fucking bombed? You For like, sure. come on, man. You got, you got to bomb a couple times to learn. Same thing with clearing a dance floor. It's the same shit. That's the equivalent of bombing. You go up all this intention and you go, I got my shit mapped out and you play it. Two <laughs> songs in, you're like, this isn't working. <laughs> Fuck. What do I do? You know, there's yeah. such similarities in that. You yeah, know? yeah. So, For sure. but the, again, getting spanked and learning, you know what I mean? And coming yeah. back and just being able to go back up on that stage, being able to come back in front of people and have a, a group of people who see your body work and go, I like that. I'm going to commit to that. I'm going to, I'm going to rock with that. Mm. To me, that's success. It doesn't matter that, you know, you've made millions of dollars or you have your, your, your number one hit singles or whatever, you mm. know, there's, um, yeah, yeah. You know, to me, I, I don't, I've never, I guess that's another thing of my, not my strategy, but like, what is success and what's a, what's a marker, you know, to me, having people receive it and love it, even if it's a small amount, depending on the project is, is means more to me than putting out something and, and the masses loving it. Now I'm not mm. against that, but I also feel like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, 60% of the time, the masses aren't really a good judge of like quality. You know what I mean? Mm, Just because yeah. McDonald's has served yeah. X amount of billions of burgers doesn't mean that their burgers are superior no, right. to other people's burgers. In no, fact, right. the more superior burger is usually the person who has the little shop around the way that only can bang out so many because they're handcrafted. So quantity over quality, like I think we've gotten to that point. So we sure have. There was a, Definitely. there's a, uh, it's funny, man. It's, and it's, I don't even mean to pick on the dude, but cause I, I have nothing against him, but it's just kind of funny. Um, I, I was coming across like I'll screenshot tweets every so often. I think one of the last, not last times, but like early on, one of the first times I should say that I played, uh, I rem fuck, I don't even remember when it was somewhere in the two thousands. I did, um, an insomniac rave or whatever. And, you know, at the end of the raves or end of the shows, you always check your Twitter and see like, oh, so-and-so, like I found this new DJ or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. one of the ones I screenshotted, I almost want to make a shirt because I think it's just so amazing. <laughs> but it's this chick who was like, I'm so glad we went to see Z Trip instead of David Guetta. And well, it was like, that's all, and, th and that's all it said. But it was just like, it's so awesome to see because yeah, man, not knocking David Guetta. He's made a fucking million hits and people love him. And, and I even like some of his tunes. But the, the idea of being able to sort of look at it and go, well, look, you know, just because 
there's these people who are at the top that everybody knows that are, are household names doesn't necessarily mean that that's the flavor that I want to be up mm-hmm. in there because it's, it's a, I feel like it's a whole other world that to, to, to live and breathe in that world. I've never really identified with bands and some of my favorite bands and some of my favorite music that I will listen to till I'm dead are bands that never even broke into that world. That's you know right. I mean? Not to say that world is yeah. bad. It's just that, you know, the masses are not necessarily to me the, the, the best judge, you know, yeah. they, they're, uh, they're uh, another sort of uh, lens to look at things through. Yeah. And I take it for what it's worth, but what is core to me? You know, I there's bands you. that meet beat manifesto, Jack dangers. Yeah. I love him. Love everything he's fucking put out. I've collaborated with the dude. I think he's a genius. Will he ever make a top 10 song? Maybe not, but yeah. I will always look for a Jack dangers record you know same. what i mean and i'll always be curious about what he's doing because de la soul is the same thing it's like there's certain groups that i will just always gravitate pay attention towards, to because, yeah 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 you know and and so the idea of of uh of of masses being the the benchmark to hit you know it goes back to the sitting at all the tables like all the tables in the in the you know what what conversation is happening at every table yeah, in that yeah, lunch yeah. room Versus what's the yeah. conversation that's happening in, with the, with the weirdos, you know, with outcasts. Yeah. That's, I'm usually a little more concerned about, that's where the, like, I want to have those conversations. Cause it's, it's not. I feel that, you. you know? I feel like, I feel like I'm. I hope, with... I, I hope I've explained this right. Because I don't want to bash. No, like, no, you smashed either. it. Like it, it's not about that. You know? No, you smashed it. You smashed it. I, I've, I've come to the conclusion that I, I, I always have gravitated to underground stuff and, you know, below the radar stuff. And I think maybe um, nowadays more so, I become a little bit more rigid to the fact that I recognise a commercial song. Some some commercial songs are great, like, but but yeah. I, I almost you know you get the hype on a movie when it's launched and everyone goes to see it. I like to see it like a year later once the hype's mm-hmm, died. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's not my bag. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. I well, I think it's it's. I've, I've, I've realized, especially from a DJ's perspective is, you know, having to sometimes play these songs that are, I know work for the dance floor, Mm -hmm. but don't necessarily, I don't connect with, I would, you know, there's a, there's a part of me that would rather be, and especially I think even more so now with, with the environment we're in, you know, where Mm -hmm. look, I'm, I'm not in front of a, a crowd of people at a bar where yeah they ask you for a, a quest or some a shit. certain yeah it's like the people who are watching my streams are there to see me so yeah. the filter is all it's like I, I can just go right to yo guys we're gonna do this today or hey this is where we're gonna go and it's just way more of a connection and I don't have to worry about so it's I it, it's yeah. kind of nice I'm very curious to see once things start happening where we go back out again Who's how stick much to their people guns. Are, yeah. yeah well just just also also just the the community like the community yeah. of like not even so much stick to your guns yeah. but like how will you know the beckys and the and the karens who are like play the you know <laughs> play wet ass pussy yeah is that even gonna like you know how weird you're gonna sound and look it's gonna be crazy now yeah. you know once like the environment of like, okay, you just sort of, if that's your, if that's your, if that's your main go-to tune, that's your first song you want to hear. Then that's fine. Out of all the songs you could hear, yeah. that's the one you want to hear. Yeah. It sort of paints you in a p- picture of like, you know, and especially if, if the masses that are there ha- have leveled up musically, which yeah. I kind of feel like we're doing to a degree now. Cause I feel like the, ma- ma- I, I feel like the majority is slowly becoming the minority. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Commercial. Yeah, I, that, that, you, you're saying it better than I could say. It. Exactly, exactly that. Wow, that's exactly crazy that. to think. I've never thought about that, but you're right. And also the integrity of other DJs. If their if their go to tune happens to be one of those sorts, of, you know, those sorts of songs, then that kind of like disposes a whole year's worth of pro campaigning, doing the thing they want to do on their own private live streams that are 
you know, have created such foundations that I think people will be second guessing where they're going to be performing in future. That's what I think as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also I think fans too, you know, like, do I want to go see this person because I feel like I'm going to get a real sense of them, yeah. you know, or am I going to go see them and I have to sort of every three songs I get to hear them, but I have to hear it through the filter of the environment and like, and it's a, it's a weird situation because, you know, mm. commerce is definitely matters, especially if you haven't been working, you know what I mean? Like it matters. Yeah. You got to get paid for something. And sometimes that bar is like the, excuse me, it's where you're going to get your, your first paycheck because it's easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think yeah. if you, this, in, this environment that we're in to me, if you've done it right, even though it doesn't, it's not financially lucrative and hasn't been over the course of it. If you've done it right, it will translate to a closer knit uh, community and Shit, people who are a little bit more yeah. connected and, and, and are hanging on your every moment yeah. sonically and care and are invested yeah. versus, um, you know, you trying to find those. Like, I, I, it's funny to me, like the more I, I progress and do these shows and streams and just in general and interacting with, with people, the more I, the more the connection matters to me more than anything. And yeah, man. I would rather, I'd rather have a smaller, real genuine community of people mm. than the masses who the genuine community is there, but they're feeling like they're not necessarily getting their yeah. thing because those people are going to come back show after show after show. And the other people on the fringe, the concept of like, I'm going to woo all these people in, maybe you will, maybe you won't, but it mm. doesn't fucking matter if Come they out. come cool. If they don't, that's cool too, but it's super yeah. crucial to keep to their attention. Take care. Yeah. It's, it's super crucial to take care of the people who, yeah. who have been rocking with you from day one. And I'm very aware of that. I try my hardest to like, never, take that for granted or give them anything that's not genuine or real. And to be honest, like mm. that's the thing that matters to me the most. And, and I feel like I've kind of taken a, a, a page out of like, uh, bands like the grateful dead, Yeah, man. you know, never yeah, really yeah. had a radio hit, but like sustainability had huge following and yeah. the environment took care of itself and it was very self-sufficient and it was very, you know, mm. there was definitely plenty of flaws as well, but like somehow this movement was able to continue to move forward based sure. around people wanting to see this movement happen. And to me, that's way more important. And I'm way open to people wanting to be part of like, the you know the island of misfit toys like we're all you know we're all outcast inherently twisted broken you know weird in some capacity but like there is a a place for everyone if you like all these different styles of music and can't mm -hmm. feel like you can't break into the into that one community because you'll always have a foot in another community it's like that's what this is kind of here for it's, if you're into music if you love dope music hopefully you're rocking with me because that's kind of my approach. And I'm always open to, to having those conversations and, and, and learning, you know, how many For times sure. have, have, have fans turned me on to shit where I'm like, yo, thank God you, I wouldn't have known about this. You know what you I mean? You turned me on to Mega Man before Mega Man came out. That whole, that, that whole dubstep PP with Scream. Was yeah, Scream yeah, yeah. 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 Just, just that was you, you. I need air. That tune. That was the big tune. Yeah, yeah. that was the tune, man. And I remember you cutting up to it in a sound check. What was it? Hard fest. We were at. Did we do hard fest? My, yeah, yeah, probably might have been one of those. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, you were cutting up in the sound. I was like, what the? Because the mix was so loud, and you were just oh. totally in the zone, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, some of the, it's funny because some of those songs, man. Some of and still to this day, there's a, a couple of producer dudes that I've, I've been listening to, like. They're making the most hip hop rooted right? feeling yeah. music. Yeah. Sonically, it might not sound like hip hop, but it's so B boy. Energy. It's so like, it's so like, mm, yeah. like you can't. Yeah. It just makes me want to like, ah, lose yeah, my yeah. fucking mind. And that's, <laughs> dude, I love that. I love that they're, and, and, and they'll never be, they'll never be labeled as that. But 
that's the energy I think I'm trying to find in any song from True. any genre. It's like that. Facts. Give me that fucking mm. ah. You know. Yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. You want to, you, you want the goosebump. You know, you want that goosebumps. You know, like it's it's, 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 it's. Hey, and listen, can, can I just intervene right now? You, when it comes to records, you have got so many records. When you're talking about collecting these things, because yeah, you know, yeah, when yeah, they, yeah. You know, I remember coming around your studio, man. It was the first time I'd ever been around some. I mean, you know, and I've gone around Mr. Things Place. You know, he's like a big record. Yeah, guy. but uh, bro, like you were just like stoked the fuck up you had you were just a to z there was stuff on the floor was, and you know <laughs> i remember we did that actually we're gonna have to put the mix on that we did i can't remember what it was for do you remember that thing oh it was like a, the new year's thing we did or something you know it's another one we did we had lean back and snoop and all that we you were cutting up oh the, yeah 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 do you remember that yeah yeah, I mean, yeah i'm gonna I have to put that, that on as part of the trailer man oh that's funny man I do yeah yeah that. no that, well that was that was me going like, oh, I have a couple of these acapellas. If you did the beats and I scratched the acapella, yeah. that could be kind of dope. So it was just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, here, let's riff off of this. And I think we banged it out in an hour or two or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we yeah, did. Man. I mean, yeah, I think we did three takes of it or something without an yeah, edit, yeah, yeah. without an, an edit at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cold, cold, yeah. Yeah, I love that stuff. But yeah, but, man, re- well, records are the lifeblood to it. Like, so I, like, I still correct, collect and I still have you know, in the studio and, and, and everything, there's still records everywhere. But like, again, it just boils down to, I love music, man. I love, I love, Mm -hmm. you know, different styles, you know, I want goosebumps, but whether it's B-boy and raw or whether it's super chill and like tears rolling down my face, you know what I mean? I want it to connect because music has been able to help me heal and process and learn and, it's connected all my dots. It's introduced me to everybody I've ever known. It's, it's the basis to everything I do. So always feeding into that, like Mm. that, that, that requires more attention to me than anything. And, you know, it's funny when, you know, it's not funny. It's actually kind of sad, but you know, you think about right now, it's like anybody who's doing music is struggling. And to me, music and art is, you know, when you talk about things that are essential, um, you know, mm. essential workers or essential, you know, you need food, you need water, you need yeah. healthcare, you need music to me is an art. And it, you know, what is everybody doing when they're sitting home? They're listening okay. to music or they're look, watching movies. That's art. That's, yeah. that's stuff that people are creating. And like, imagine if you were going through this pandemic and you had no outlet oh my God. to connect with, anything or to diffuse all the tension. You know what I mean? Like the fact that there's all these DJs putting it out there for nothing. You know what I mean? Like for subscribers or for donations, like, you know, I being one of them, it's like, I haven't, I haven't really done a gig since February, man. I haven't, Mm. you know what I mean? And who knows when I'll be in front of a crowd again. I've done some streams here and there and whatnot, but like, I feel like all of these artists who are putting out their energy and helping out, everybody around them you know it's just interesting that a lot of people don't see that as um i would say more so in the states as they see it as a lifeline yeah they don't see it as as a as a as a as as an importance and to be able to keep those people surviving and in motion because they're they're people's therapy you know what i mean and like you take that away or you you know and i it, it harkens back to me to earlier times in in um in America, when they took funding out of music in schools and art mm. in schools and art programs, and and you know, yeah. if you look back and, and you look at any of the cultures, like they always held their artists up high and took That's care right. of them. And I it's feel the like you know, here. the same is happening here in the UK, man. Yeah, it's it's it, you know, artist art mm. in general is um, is suffering because the thing that we would do in sharing the art was mm. the ability to share it in an open forum, you know, around, around the, the campfire, Yeah, you know, there is no campfire. There is no drum circle. There is no community. It's the best you can do is on streaming. And while it's, it's helped and there's plenty of benefits to it. Um, yeah. you know, I find yeah. that I, I've been, I, me personally, I've, you know, I've, I've been working harder, um, and, you know, getting paid less for it, which is again, um, not to equate, the financial to the work, but 
it's very disheartening when eight months will go by and you're like, man, I've been banging this fucking thing out. And like, yeah, you know, yeah, there's I, a lot I of noise sort of and con- congestion I, out there. Yeah. I am sort of concerned about like, uh, you know, how long can I keep my head above water in doing this? You know what I mean? And, and yeah, you know, like, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for, for my history and, and, you know, I'm not in a horrible place, but for how long, you know, and I look yeah, at yeah. other people who are incredible artists who were just now breaking into it or maybe a year or two ago. Yeah. Who, you know, fuck, like I've heard of a lot of people having to like move out of certain places or, yeah. you know, recontextualize their livelihood in order to, uh, you know, survive. And for that's, sure. to, uh, you know, having amazing artists who provide service and goods to people struggling to survive it's terrible. crushes me yeah it crushes for sure. me for sure for sure it's an uncertain time man and uh, yeah doubling down and not getting paid it's it's challenging but also i don't know on, uh, on the optimistic side that i sometimes wake up in the morning most mornings and just keep them it's like you've got to believe in the uh, in the journey you've got to believe Without in, a doubt, without you know, a doubt. And if this without is a process, a if this is a process, then remember, remember, I, and I say this to myself as well when I'm thinking, because, you know, very rarely, but at times I kind of sigh in my head saying, oh, I've got to go and do this now. I, what would your 21-year-old do? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, they would work double hard for nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, yeah. they'd be ready to go. They'd yeah, be waking, yeah. they'd be pulling you out of the bed like, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, what are you yeah. doing, young no, man? I, Get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I think it's it's double-edged sword because, you know, for me, I'm okay, but I look at other DJs and other artists yeah. uh, who are not, and that's the part that I'm I'm struggle I struggle sure. with. Is like I wish there was some sort of for them, you yeah. know, government uh safety net or something for artists in general to just be able to like know that hey man it's struggle so we'll bear down but i'm this isn't going to wipe me out that's all but i but it is a double-edged sword in the sense that there you know there's an upside to this and Mm. the thing that's kind of interesting is you have to look at it through that lens yeah i think that's maybe another um another thing of again hoping for the the you know hoping for the best preparing for the worst but the hoping for the best and and learning from, you know, taking everything that's a negative and trying to flip it into a positive is super crucial, especially now. For sure, yeah. Is, you know, there is an upside to this. It did level the playing field. Yes. It brought everybody down to zero. Uh-huh. It it took things that were getting a little too crazy, in my opinion, yeah. um, too flashy production, too much of, of, of uh, things that didn't matter. Sample packs. Musically, you know what I mean? Like things that were happening, I was like, this is, it's getting a little sort of, you know, predictable, predictable and, and bubble gum and yeah. not raw. And like, we need yeah. to dial it back a little bit more to, 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 to me, I felt it's that. brought, it's brought some of that down a little bit and made it yeah. sort of leveled the playing field and made some of the people who were, who were riding high on that and taking advantage of that, which, you know, more power to you. It was a time, but I just don't know if like, it can come back. I don't know that. if you can come back like that now. Yeah. I think every, you know, everybody's, brought it down a little bit. So it's a little bit of a reset. And so the positive in the reset is it allows you and me and everybody else to recalibrate and recontextualize. And, Mm. you know, I've done a lot of revisiting into music that I care about and And your skills too, because skills make skills are now back in play. You go, man. Well, because, because we're all under a microscope, everyone's watching what you're doing. Yeah, for you know, sure. All the streams, people are watching yeah. you do something. And if you're just standing there hitting a couple of buttons and dancing around, like you don't have all this cool production and cool shit going on to distract from that. Bro, you know? I, so, I, I feel like I'm cheating when I'm on Zoom right now because I'm I would be in I would be with you chopping it up and then we'd do something as a trailer for something. Yeah, we'd, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, this yeah. is this to me is like so easily it blows my brain but and the fact that other people are doing it i'm like well do i fall in line i've got no choice you know so you're right about the lens and 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 uh it's it's really hard on one side not to fall in line because everyone has to work within these you know configurations that they set us but yeah you've within this join you've really got to maximize your potential haven't you yeah well i think you you've got it's forcing people to either get better and evolve or not. And 
for people like us, I feel like it's a situation where I do that every day anyway. So no matter what the fuck you're going to throw at me, I'm going to land on my feet. You know what I mean? And so that's the, it just means I got to work harder. And so Mm -hmm. that's what I'm doing. I'm working harder, you know, and eventually I figure like the, it'll, it'll, it'll equate somewhere. It'll, it'll work itself out in the, in the long run somewhere. So, you know, I'm, I'm not really obsessed with, uh, again, the, 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 the getting paid for the amount that I'm doing right now. It's not, you know, although again, it's, it's a double-edged sword. One hand, it'd be great to be able to just not worry about that shit. Mm. But on the other hand, maybe that's, it's, it's good to worry about that shit because it forces you to do or die. And, you know, is it, easier to walk the balancing you know the balancing act with a net or without a net well mm-hmm. without a net it's way more real and so you're going to pay attention way more it's do or die and so yeah, for real i feel like there's a level of that now and you're getting to see people you know either sink or swim under that and um mm. it's an interesting time man you know uh it's for an interesting sure. time but I, I i will say you know for me my head's in a good place and my heart is in a good place. And I, I have to thank my fans for, for supporting me and keeping me afloat and, Absolutely, um, bro. you know, having the ability to have a, uh, you know, have my, my Twitch streams and my Instagram and, you know, Facebook, YouTube, all the, all the ways I connect to have those lanes open and to be able to communicate directly has been therapy for me as much as it's been therapy for them. And uh, to be honest, if that wasn't in place, I think I'd be way worse off. So I'm, I'm, I'm at this moment, like if I can do this or better, uh, I'm happy. You know what I mean? Like, and it's, and it's also brought me closer to fans. So I'm stoked on that. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's like, I mean, it's brought you and I like, yeah, yeah. everyone's, everyone's doing, I just got hit up to do another podcast thing. And just as we were talking, somebody saw it pop up. It was like, everyone's wanting to communicate and connect. And this is now sort of the, if Uh you're not swimming in these streams, man, like you're probably missing out. And it's, for great sure. to reconnect. It's great yeah. to reconnect, man. And what's really you know? dope is that, you know, first of all, um, before I go any further with this one, but I'll say, um, yeah, like just reiterating really what I said at the top, your fans are super hardcore. And, and I think as time moves on and progresses within this time, your level will go up and their attention will go up. And it, it's, it's again, it's reacting to the circumstances. It's only going to make things ever more advanced and from a personal artistical point of view isn't it you know it's it, yeah. that's what's the, yeah and it, that's why art the creatives creative i mean you talk about the comedians i mean you know we can take references to you know cooking programs to be a producer you know to be a producer you have to have these ingredients like your records and stuff and yeah and yeah you see how, how deep they fold into themselves creatively like comedians do when they're up on stage and all these different if you pay enough attention now you'll see a huge rise in the arts and culture the whole thing will just flourish in a whole different direction that wouldn't have happened before right it wouldn't have ever happened no no and and what's interesting too is i've started to see a lot more people find their voice you know um Mm. and not just musically but socially you know what i mean it's a very Mm. interesting thing you know being silent or not um in these times standing for something or not um is it's just very interesting you know just picking apart sort of the the environment is really ripe for for speaking up and and saying something and and communicating and, and as a as a as a, uh, someone who consumes art to see artists say those things where I can be like, Oh, there's some refuge in that. Like, yeah. uh, am I the only one going crazy? No, I'm not. Thank God. Fuck. Cause like, it's yeah. a crazy time. So hearing these artists spit these, that's right. You know, lifelines to me where it's like, at least I can have refuge in knowing that I'm not alone and, mm. or, you know, there are more of us than there are of them in, in siding on the right side of things or whatever it is, or just a sense of community. For sure. You know, I, I feel like there was a moment there where, you know, I grew up listening to public enemy and rage against the machine and the last poets and protest music and mm. empowering music, music that made you recognize, you know, self. And we grew it's up very on interesting. That's, you know, that's the real shit. You know what I mean? So it's very interesting to me to um, to be in an environment musically where there was a moment where I wasn't really hearing any of that stuff as much mm. as I thought I 
would or should. And I feel like now there's also a level of like, well, we got nothing to lose. So fucking just sure. you know, put For it out sure. there. You know, what was it? What was it like working with Chuck? Cause you and him are tight. You, you guys have been friends for a long time. What was it? What was um, it, what was it like? It, it, it's great. I mean, Chuck is, Chuck is a, you know, wise observer, pays attention to everything, mm. you know, um, the conversations we would have amazing, you know what I mean? Uh, like, you know, definitely prolific mm. prophet, you know, very aware his perspective. Um, always very interesting to me. You know what I mean? Just uh, really sort of dissecting a little bit of, of, of history through him, through his eyes. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. He's, you know, it's Chuck D man. You, he, he it's, could it's Chuck it. D. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You must have pinched yourself too many times though, bro. I mean, I remember I tour supported him for like four shows and I was constantly just, <laughs> just a yeah, little bit of shit being lost every, every Yeah, he's, he's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah. And he's, uh, he's, he's an incredible, um, you know, uh, a credible source. I mean, you know, the thing that I used to always love is um, when we were touring, uh, um, it was uh, LL and myself, Public Enemy, De La Soul, Ice Cube. Um, was that like a Rock the Bells type situation? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was called the Kings of the Mic tour. That's it. And um, and I'd worked with Chuck in the past, but he he got to see me and and LL doing our thing, and you know he would always stand at the side of the stage, and when we were done, he was always sort of paying attention, observing. You know, again, mm-hmm. an observer. And I remember him coming up to me. And he was like, dude, you're, you're the maestro. You're back there hitting everything. Cause it's just LL and me and it's mm-hmm. proper MC and DJ. That's it. What you hear and what you see is real and raw. There's no overdubs or any bullshit. It's real. So there'd be moments where, you know, very much like a James Brown thing where LL would call out, Hey, we're going to do this. I'd be like, oh, all right, cool. And it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. a lot of, a lot of bobbing and weaving, but yeah. having the full, um, you know, uh, the full toolkit at my dispose, um, yeah. allowed me to sort of bob and weed. But I remember like, you know, coming off stage and Chuck would be like, yo man, you, you're like count Basie up there, like doing your thing. Or like, you know, he would, he, he would give me like these analogies, <laughs> sports analogies of certain players. You're like, man, you're like the assist with this. Like, yeah. Oh, that thing you did there was an alley-oop to that. And it's like, it was, so it was very, very, um, gratifying Crazy. to, uh, yeah, to, to, you know, and also I picked up some game from Chuck as well. Like mm. I remember one time he, um, we were pulling into a sound check and there was the public enemy bus, um, that they had, you know, all the members of public enemy that mm-hmm. he was rocking with a band. And I remember they all pulled in and Chuck wasn't there. I was like, where's Chuck? And then like maybe an hour later, Chuck pulled up in a car and, uh, that he was driving. And I was like, yo, wh- why aren't you on the bus? He's like, man, I, I choose my time. But he's like, you know, they're all watching Kung Fu flicks and like smoking weed or doing whatever they're doing on the bus, whatever part, tour bus shit. Right. So mm-hmm. it's like, they're all, he's like, I like to be by myself. I can think I can, I yeah. can take messages, calls, whatever. So he would, he would follow not all the time, but certain spots he would just rent a car and sort of follow behind the bus and like stay at his own hotel, yeah, get the yeah. car. I was like, that that's the fucking like that's, that's the jedi moves. yoda move yeah right it's like mm-hmm. yeah like total jedi yoda uh-huh. how to tour correctly you know yeah, yeah, but yeah. like 101 it's not something you know it's not something that you would just sort of pick up on but it was like oh that's game that's game i gotta learn that i gotta like okay that's yeah. good because like you know peace of mind on the road is crucial so like and get able to sleep on a spot get up and like yeah you know listen to podcasts have that moment to yourself whatever not sure. be on the bus with everybody yeah. was was game like you know so i was i was always pick, picking up game from that dude tell me the story that you told me tell them the story that you told me about your first uh time with uh ll and uh he you gave him the record without the vocals oh was yeah it? that was um that was big that was a big that was a big moment for me that was a big, so that was a big step in hip-hop by the way <laughs> yeah well it was also a big step in in my career with um with LL. Hold on. You know, I got to move a little bit because the sun is like, we've been talking so long. The sun is, um, that's what I like to hear is creeping, creeping up man, which is kind of nice, but I gotta, hold on a second. 
I got to put, put the shades down, man. I'm starting to like get burnt out over here. Yeah, get your shades on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Just a little bit, man. Oh, I'll cooking see that. over there. See that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There yeah. you go. All right. So, um, yeah, I mean, linking up with LL was incredible. Um, we had met, um, had taken some some meetings with some TV producer who was looking to do a show where they wanted LL to host. They wanted me to do the music for it um, and DJ. And it ended up not happening. But in those meetings, um, my manager uh, then had pitched to his manager to see if he wanted to come and do a guest spot, surprise guest spot on a set I was doing for South by Southwest. Shit. So I was headlining a set in, in, in Austin. And um, I just, I was like, Oh, this is not going to happen. But they, he said yes. And he agreed to do mama said, knock you out. So he agreed to do one song. I was like, yo, this is amazing. Um, and we had set, uh, I think in a day or two, we'd set time to go to the studio to work on the track. Mm-hmm. And the night before I was like, well, what happens if somebody wants to hear, um, you know, more stuff. And it's like, I, as a fan, if I saw LL and he did one song, I'd be like, yeah. what? So, yeah. um, the, the idea for me was like, okay, well we got to do rock the bells. Right. And we got to do, I need love like at the very least. So, um, I ended up looking around. I know as a DJ that they never pressed up on the 12 inch of, rock the bells they there's there's two versions of rock the bells there's rock the bells the original yeah. which is like over some some bells ding 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 yeah yeah right and then there's the version everybody knows um but there was never an instrumental to, to that mm-hmm. to either of them and so i started looking at old youtube clips and i i started to see all the clips i saw were of him rapping over the the his vocals which you know led me to believe that maybe he doesn't even have a copy of the instrumental. And, you know, so I got to the point where I was like, well, wait, what is rock the bells? Mm. I was like, it's an 808. I have an 808. It's um, the stabs, which is, blah, which is actually an ACDC guitar riff from an ACDC song. I have that song. Dude. There's a couple other little bits and pieces, trouble funk break. I'm like, I have mm. that trouble funk thing. There's another Saron rock in the pocket. I'm like, I got that. I'm like, I have all the ingredients. I need to just remake this because I know, I know the song verbatim. I've been listening to it forever. Right. So yeah. I sat down and I, I pulled out the 808 and um, programmed it, laid it all out, um, did it verbatim, pitched it, tuned it, made Crazy. it sound really big too. Like got the bass to crack and everything. And, um, and went to, uh, to the rehearsal and we did mama said, knock you out three or four times and then we had a little bit extra time i was like yo we should do rock the bells he's like all right and so we launched into it and he went to rap you know you've been waiting and debating for so long the first line and didn't hear his vocal underneath and so he was like where'd you get this and uh you know as the chorus came around scratching you i'm like i made this he's like what and so we finished the song he's like play it again play it. and we did the song like maybe six or seven times damn we're both we're both sweating we're both hyped and he was like what else you got in that computer like what you know like and we just the 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 chemistry we had was starting to sort of bubble yeah and it and it was like the thing that i i realized um that moment was our work ethic is very much the same in that it's attention to detail everything matters he's incredibly involved in the process as i am and when you see somebody when game recognize game like Mm -hmm. you just automatically know Mm -hmm. oh it's the same thing with you and i you Mm -hmm. know when you see someone who you just know pays you know what i'm saying like you just know and it's like okay well half the world just dissolves because now you're like oh we what else can we do this like this is so crazy um, you know him him hearing me make remake the instrumental and just do it and i was like look man i'm a purist i can't if i can help it i'm not gonna put you on in you know on a stage rapping to a beat that we could do ourselves it would take a little bit more work but it's gonna sound better in the long run and the funny thing is yeah you know then we were we were messing around he's like you know uh, he told me, he's like, you know, the, the Mardi Gras bells, the ding, 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 ding. He's like, those were originally in that beat. And 
Rick Rubin took him out and gave him to run DMC for Peter Piper. I was like, oh, word. He's like, yo, throw those bells back in. So I went back the next day and put the bells in. So and then we did sick. the show with the bells. It was like, the, it was just this moment of like, it was just so fucking dope to, 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 to be on stage with LL for the first time. Yeah. Running Rock the Bells <laughs> with the bells in it, with him. The original way. Yo, it was, it was, um, it was hip hop. It was fucking hip hop, like a motherfucker. And, you know, I think that's like the most hip hop thing any of my friends have ever done, to be fair. <laughs> it's like the most, yeah, it was probably, it's probably the most hip hop thing I've ever done. That's for sure. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, man, he, um, you know, he, he fucking smashed it. You know what wow. I mean? It was an incredible, incredible, um, show. And like, you know, we both got off stage and we were just like, hyped and we were like we gotta it's like we gotta do more of this like this has got to so we just it just evolved our our you know our collaboration really sort of evolved from then and um and you know we we turned you know five ten minutes into 15 minutes into a half hour to 45 to a 60 minute show to an hour and 15 to like you know, and it's just the the show got to progress because it was equal parts he and I sharing ideas and like the work ethic. Yeah. Yeah. But like proper, like DJ MC, this is how hip hop is supposed to be how we know it Yeah, presented. And then it became this thing of like the B boy in you comes out where you're trying to better yourself from the last time. So always, we're always Sick. pushing each other. Love and it. It's, and it's, and it's like, yeah. you know, to be able to, to be on stage with the goat, you know what I mean? Like that's the, that's the guy right there. Yeah. And, you know, to be able to, to, to be creating hip hop um, like that and not just, you know, on stage, but amazing. in all the other things we've done um, has been amazing. Cause he's, like I said, a huge mentor. Like, you know, I, I just the, the level of respect that I think he and I have for each other is, um, is incredible. And it, you know, the cool thing about it is, at some point it's it all the all the other stuff that comes with fame and notoriety and making music and all the other things which are of importance but when you and the person you're collaborating with are sitting down you're like yo those snares need to be tuned this way or that drum needs to be or like hey we mm. should rub it like we should do this here or like we should throw that break beat over here it's like For real when you're when you're when you're when all that other stuff is is melted away and you're focused in on the craft with somebody who cares about it as much as you do it's incredible and it's it's a it's a it's i can't it's like a, a different level of high yeah you know what i mean that like i can't so i've been you know i'm i'm lucky enough to 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 say that i've been able to share those experiences a lot with him um and you know, it's just kind of funny, man, because it came together organically and it's a very real dope thing. And, and I, I really care about it. And I, and I, I, um, I, I hold it in very high regard. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, it's one of those things where I'll stop pretty much anything I'm doing to focus in on that because not even so much of like the notoriety is great, but it's the, I'm, I don't get that feeling yeah. from much anything else to the level I do when I'm working with him. So that's, so, so that's like the, that's the, the thing. It's like, Oh yeah. You know, like, you know, you want to do some shit. Let's go. Like it's, yeah. it's the B boy. me is like, let's go, you know, at any moment. So you can, you it's, can't it's, it's an amazing thing, man. That, bro. That's just fire. Wow. He's, he's, he, if you think about it too, man, like of, of all the cats that came out around that time, like, yeah, how many are still doing it and to the la to that level, man. And yeah, are that, right. you know, known and successful. And it's like, it's, um, it's amazing, man. It, it, yeah. it, it's just, it's an amazing friendship and it's amazing, um, you know, working relationship and, and yeah, I'm just, you know, yeah. I, again, man, mentor and, uh, blessed to be able to be working on stuff with that guy. Fucking amazing. It's yeah. Amazing. It's, it's, it's wild. It's wild. It's wild. There's your, Crazy two, there's, journey, there's your two degrees separation <laughs> for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? <laughs> you know I mean? And again, you know, yeah. this world is crazy. You make your opportunities or you don't. You just put out, like you say, you put, yeah. put out and uh, um, you see things through. But whether it's good, bad, doesn't matter. Just be consistent. 
and yeah, uh, yeah, and 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 that's the, dude, like, you know, I feel like me working on that that Rock the Bells instrumental was, you know, dare I say, instrumental in you know us uh, doing more stuff. But it's like mm. I would have done that with with anybody because that's just my work ethic. Sure, you know what I mean? Sure. It's like so. Yeah. If I have an opportunity, it goes back to sort of the the one line of like you know, no matter the task, big or small, do it right or don't do it at all. And that yeah. was my thing of like, yeah, I was probably tired as fuck from being up and you know creating that you know spending eight hours that I didn't have to do but I wanted to do. Um, and that stuff that's kind of matters. It's like just do just do do good work and don't be concerned about like. Oh, I logged these hours or these likes or kind of goes back to what I'm saying, man. It's like, yeah, it does. eventually, you know, people will, the things will connect, you know, yeah. but always be about the work and about the work ethic and about the, the showing know, up and doing. Yeah. The, the putting the, putting that in front of, of anything else, because that, that's what matters is the art, the art matters, the craft mm-hmm. matters, the, you know, doing that kind of work is the payment really. You know, and everything else just, you know, if you keep doing it and you keep and you be about that, then I feel like um, opportunities and notoriety and all the things you're you're hunting for mm. eventually just they just get they line up behind you because that, you know, it all when you're that forward thinking, that shit just falls in line because yeah. it's never really about that. It's about. Yeah, you're right, bro. You know, so I don't know. That's 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 I think my. You know, if you talk about strategy, I guess that's it. It's just His strategy, don't yeah. make it about anything else, man. Just be about the be about the business. You know, be, get yeah, your yeah. work done. Do be about the art. Be about the craft. You know, what a great sentiment to end the podcast on, my brother. Yeah, man. Well, hold on a second. I, I, I there's two things I don't want to do. I don't want to end right this second. But more <laughs> importantly, we've been talking about me this whole fucking time, which is good. Good on everybody for you know. I appreciate you checking it out, but I can't just be on a podcast with you and be like, yo, what have you been up to the last fucking 15 years? Can you, can you, can you fill me in on some shit, man? How have you been? What have you been up to? This is too one-sided. No, this is uh, time out. Time out. Uh, okay. Give me well, something. Fuck out of here. Well, I, you know, I've been, I've been in and out. I did the, you know, I did the project with them and us, my, my then girlfriend, right? Mm-hmm. And when we broke up, it was like, yo, what am I going to do in my life, man? Because, you know, obviously after eight years, shit's going to change pretty quickly. But a friend of mine said to me, oh, <clears throat> you should, you know, restart the Killer Keller thing. But maybe, you know, I heard, heard this podcast thing. You know, this was like in 2016, 27, 2016, I think it was, 2017. And I, and I, I said, well, oh, a podcast what's it what would you do and you go you have to talk to people you, you know you have discussions or you can talk on your own and uh i immediately thought and they were like yo you got loads of friends in music like, you know hit them up and obviously like being single now i was like well it would be good to regroup with people now that i need them you know on a kind of put the put them you know the armor back on my body for this for this in, interim and uh yeah I started doing it and I didn't realize how many friends A gave a shit, B were on call, and C were just totally up for giving this new podcast thing, which was still quite a, a reasonably new th- thing that you factor in in the music industry. So I was like, all right, let's give it a go. Anyway, like I've done like this is the, this this one when it comes out will be like the two hundred and tenth. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, so yes. So, uh, question. Yeah. In your two hundredth, you know, episode ish. Yeah. What are what are the top? I mean, I've given you a couple of pearls of wisdom. What are the top five things that you can tell me that you have learned or that are you know that matter? Give me some 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 knowledge, some, uh, some game, some knowledge, so I can leave here as well, being like, uh, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. What have you learned? What what matters? What doesn't matter? What two things I've learned. Two things are learnt that are super key. Um, one's a little bit more. Um, yeah, no, I can say them both. Firstly, the art of listening is like you were saying about Chuck and LL. That's just paramount. Like you learn to listen when you do a podcast because, okay, there's elements where you're waiting for the next 
thing to say you find the next hook that someone's saying like today's podcast you've you you've excelled you, you like there's some people that just aren't like pr savvy like they were like countless hooks within your conversations but because you're listening and you're just you just fall into these zones and and then your questions become a lot more truer because you're listening so listening's everything um and secondly and this actually is probably the most important thing because within within the first 10 of my podcasts i've had i mean you know i've had pretty much the who's who of of uk music in dance in the dance and hip hop genre right all of them all of them the real conversations happen when the camera turns off because they've had a conversation with you and they're in a comfy place now and they may have had an extra drink on top of the two they've had over a, over a conversation every single one of them suffers the same problems as doesn't matter how far up the chain you are you could be the most successful you can be that the bottom they have problems with the agent they have problems with the manager they have problems with the, you know and uh, you know you don't see or hear that and i've been so privileged to have been sitting there and sometimes i'm just so surprised at the people that even my own perception of a person i'm like yeah but you're xyz you can't possibly have these but it's just it's it's a musical fact of life you know what i mean and uh, right and I, I just wish some people would uh, you know like us coming up back in the day and i'm sure you were the same in some capacity you you aspire to these people you aspire for these things but t you you don't realize it's not the machine behind them it's the it's the mental state that you have to be in if you're constantly wondering what the other person's doing and what what makes them so special that they have da -da 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 -da, it doesn't work like that it's what's going on in here entirely isn't it right right crazy that's that's great that's great mm. well i did so all right so that's two. Give me, give me three more pearls of wisdom because this is great. Listening, love it. Big fan of that. Um, the other, the other interesting thing is when I, when I broke up with my then girlfriend, and also it will, this is also contributive to probably uh, a lot of my career prior to that with Killer Keller. I, n I never realized how fucking lazy I was. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, I mean. I say this all the time. I've got to be kind of the Bill Gates attitude. I still have the give give uh, a lazy person a hard job because they find the quickest way to get it done fast. You know, um, I still have that in me. But when I was literally left on the wayside, and someone says to me, "Right, do a new project," like, no, this isn't a music project. This is a this is pretty much setting up your own TV network project. You know, and you just suddenly, um, so yeah. I think with any new project I've learned, this, particularly through this, is once you've got that side of your brain working, you can literally adapt each learning curve of each particular thing. You can adapt it to an, it's just a different language on a different piece of software. Or it's a different camera with a different thing, or it's a, it's a different crack bit of software. It's you just got to figure it out. That's another awesome thing I've learned with the podcast and you know video world crazy That's what about what ab what about uh the the worst the downside the, give me give me don't do these things that the this was a horrible this was a train wreck don't or anything i mean you know i i want to share your ups and your downs i haven't really hung out with you or talked with you in a yeah. very long time so wow. you know I, uh, pick and choose them wisely yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean i don't want to you know, nothing to incriminate yourself. My brother, I'm, just, my brother. I'm just very curious, you know. My brother. Um, the car wrecks. The car wrecks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the hardest thing that I've... Right, I did 10 live shows, right? Like, I had, like, the main act, the B-list, the C-list, I wouldn't get into like, because to me, they're all the same. They're all fucking awesome. They come on the show. They showed up. It was a, an audience only. It was like a TV show, bro. It was like Ellen. It was like Ellen's show, but for music. And I'd be, we'd go live on Facebook. You would get a shit ton of people watching and that just freaked me the fuck out. <laughs> but the pre preparation and production was what was the real contributor to, to the sweat. That shit is so hard to put on. Like 
when you haven't got a producer, an assistant, a director, you haven't got a vision mixer, you haven't got the lights guy, you've only got two cameramen, you've got an engineer, you know, and you're taking all this burden and then you've got an extra couple of, um, you've, you've added an extra six VTs into the mix so that you can change over sets while that's playing in five for five minutes and then you've got like two co-hosts that need to know where they're going to be positioned and which camera's going to and I'm just like on oh, my ones and I did it 10 times I can't believe I did it but but it, to think that I went through that and to go back on it that was that that arguably I'm um, just going putting the going through my head with that right now it was a shit shit storm that was that could that could have gone really really wrong had I not um I've had such a solid team and uh, uh and yeah just tenacity to want to drive it through you know that was a i couldn't do it now though i don't think i could that's a lot you probably could you probably could don't underestimate yourself i mean what you know <laughs> what i mean like there's also the thing of sometimes the the necessity of of not knowing but like figuring it out as you you know trial by fire i think is is uh oh yeah, true true trial by fire yeah right yeah maybe you're right and actually to to do that many in a stint i mean I think what it also was that which sends chills down my spine is I, I kind of had, you know, Goldie was one of the main characters. Then there was Basement Jacks. There was Dynamo Magician. There was Groove Rider. Like I had these, these peers, these people that were just like, so they were just showing up saying, yeah, kills would come down. And I was like, yeah, I've got to honor this because these are my heroes, A and B. They're doing it because they believe in the project. So all of a sudden it's like, <gasps> it's the way yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course, of course. But that's but that's that's also the pressure that I think we understand from being like, okay, here's the mic. You're on in ten minutes. Yeah. Don't know what I'm going to do. All right, well, let's, we'll start with a simple beatbox and we'll just get them here. Like, true, we'll start with true. Cut or, so you just sort of, you know, you'll never let them know that you don't that you're making it up as you go. But like, that's true. there's a level of of performance with that. That's like that's inherent in what we do. So it's probably funny if I go back and I watch some of this stuff, chances are I wouldn't know that you're like secretly sweating. Right. It's like <laughs> yeah, it kind of true. what you're saying about these other people who are like, they're having the same issues with managers and agents, whatever. And you wouldn't necessarily know because your perception. So I think that's, you know, whatever the, the, you know, never let them see you sweat kind of like, it's true. You know, never, never allude to like what's going on, you know, always put the, do the show and process it afterwards, I think is, is crucial. Again, you know a, a right, comedy thing, right. again, again, a comedy <laughs> tactic, like all comes back to that. You know what I mean? Like some of these comedians are some of the most tortured individuals yeah. self, you know, you know, like they're just, there's a lot of, to have a genius mind to churn out that kind of stuff. Some people are a little damaged and a little sort of like, you know, so they, they, process that in whatever way they do outside but on stage it comes out in a way that's therapy right so it's like yeah you know you know I, I find i connect with that i connect with the therapy on stage so and especially you know especially if i'm in an environment where i'm like i don't know you know but to be able to riff and come out on top and come out with some new material yeah is the that's you kind of you can only get that from being vulnerable right that's so true no you're absolutely right um actually i do have a story i do have a story for you i don't think i've ever told you this but it was on tour with you in fact i'm not even sure it's going to make the cut if it does not be very surprised that's fine but it's all good, all good. The, i'm the, curious the, 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 yeah so i think we were parking up so it must have been california somewhere because i was flying back and uh i remember you guys were on the tour bus and you, you dropped me off and you were like, yo, uh, if you're leaving the bus that we're, we're heading up across, um, up towards Portland, we're going to, you know, Canada or wherever. So can you, can you get rid of this bag? Right. And I'm like, yeah, right, cool. <laughs> so you gave me like an empty bag of like nothing but leftover, like weed or something. Shit. And I was like, yeah, sure. And I just put it in my pocket and I, <laughs> I just went to the hotel and I didn't think any of it. I woke up in the morning, like super late for the, for the flight. And I'm like, oh, shit, I gotta go, 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 go. You know, you know, this one Uber times, this was like get a yellow cab and try and call up with an English accent time, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I had to like make <laughs> it happen super quick, you know, and 
put on my best American accent, I get down to the airport and I'm rushing it through because I'm thinking, fuck, you know, I, go, I speed past the dog, I speed past the, I go to, through to the check the uh, customs with the bags and I'm about to take my jacket off and I'm like, <laughs> great, great. That's, and I casually, it was almost like, for me, it couldn't have gone fast enough. This slow motion movement of putting my jacket back on and just kind of scratching my chin and putting the other rucksack on and walking casually out and then speeding straight to the nearest bin. I was just like, flip <laughs> this fucking jacket. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, my God. That was just like, I don't think I ever told you that story. But the, moment, like, the moment I almost got you deported. That's yeah. great. Like, and, 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 and yeah. <laughs> banned from coming back into the states <laughs> but ironically sorry, you dude. did you did help me with my o1 visa right so yeah 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 yeah, That's, um, yeah i'm sorry I, I it's funny you know that that happened to me um coming back from canada i remember i went and i did a, a shambhala festival like very or maybe it wasn't even that maybe it was earlier than that mm. yeah, it was way earlier than that i think it was one of the first times i was in canada um but i went up there this is back with Emil and Radar when we did the bomb shelter DJ. So we went up there yes. and did the show and, um, you know, somebody handed me a joint or whatever. And I don't think I was smoking that heavy back then, but I was like, Oh, cool. Canadian weed. This has got like, this is good weed. So I should, I'll save this for maybe later. And I put it in my, mm-hmm. my little, the little tiny, um, the short pocket in your jeans. Oh yeah. I put I it in there and I was like, cool. I, I, whatever. And I went through, customs everything whatever and i was on the plane i went to the bathroom and as i was pulling up my pants in the bathroom i realized this this joints in my pocket i'm on the plane i'm like and i was so freaked out by like i like here's the the fucking thing is (laughs) i was home free i should have just fucking kept it but i was so freaked out i was like oh i pot of me that i just instantly threw it away like i was like i'd already gone through all the he's stupid like you know yeah. like i sat down because i was just sweating because i was like ah like, you're, you're, it's like get it off me like ah, this, this jeopardized me flying and and me doing shows and like the, the businessman in me was like what are you doing yeah yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. i literally crumbling forgot about it but the fact that um that i made it through everything and that was also a moment where i was like oh wow security oh like okay like you know I, yeah. I, it just makes you sort of you know think about you as you know especially if you're probably high even then at the time if you're like going to the airport you're high and you like have some on you're probably like everyone's looking at me you know when it's really like you know they're looking for deeper shit and like the little joint that you had in your pocket no one's you know but this is the thing man like in your head and my head these scenarios they play out but you're really thinking hold on i'm one of the good guys here yeah, 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 yeah. Don't kill me off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I literally was on the plane, like going back to Arizona, probably had like another 45 minutes on the flight. And I was like, ah, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, I totally made it, man. Like you, you could have celebrated. You could have got off the plane. Yeah, and like, yeah, hey, yeah. guys, check this out. Like, totally. You know, and I totally blew it. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Dude, man. it's really great to catch up with you, man. You too, my brother. Really, and hopefully we it's can. It's really do- great to catch up. We we'll get a beer together properly soon. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I don't. You know, who knows when the when all this is gonna you know get back together and in order. But you know, at some point soon. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if it's me coming over there, you coming over here. But uh, just gotta you know. make it happen, man. We gotta make. It we got. I want to get on stage with you. We gotta do something again. That's the part yeah. that I miss, man. The beer yeah. is cool, but we gotta do some shit, man. That that'll be fun. Well, I'm. I'm, I'm just and I must, up with I, the machine. I think, I think I have, by the way, I think I have, um, I was going through some old hard drives of the Shifting Gears tour, and I think I have some audio. I remember I came across, this is a while ago, but I know I came across some audio of us doing stuff that we recorded. So I have to go back and really oh. sort of spend a minute, but I'll find it because I, that would be some fun shit. That'd like, be some amazing shit, bro. That, oh. I think I remember doing a, a didn't, you would do the trumpet scratching and i would do the trumpet and we would go back and forth on that and then we you, would break and do the drums and we'd go back and forth on the drums and things and then bus driver would come in oh you know, yeah some great moments yeah we we were riffing like that was that, that whole thing was like i remember you, you were actually great because we were i mean that, like just to describe the tour really quick for people who don't know mm-hmm. there was um my set of turntables main i had a, a another dj or two i don't remember if there was two but 
we had another two to four sets of turntables off to the side. <laughs> then I had a drum set um, right. with a drummer and then a second drum set that I would play. We had a big video screen behind us and we had moments where people would come up and play video games um, and we would play the music to the video games. This is a whole yeah. scratching uh, D- DVDs. Like there was, it was super high tech. Super ahead of duty, its time. And, yeah, way ahead of its time for sure. And the thing that was interesting was anytime you would come on, it allowed me to get off stage and everybody off stage and you would get like five, 10 minutes to just, Hey, this yeah. hey, everybody, you don't know who this guy is, but he's the shit. Check him out. Kill a killer. <laughs> and you yeah. would go and you'd blow all their fucking minds. Yeah. And it would be that moment of us to like sit back and be like, Oh, yeah. Fuck. You know what I mean? That moment of like, you were <laughs> like, and I wanted, I wanted you so badly to be on every, um, every run because we were yeah. doing, we had, you know, we had bus driver, we had AC alone. Uh, there Crazy. was, yeah, we had Drez at one point, <laughs> soup from J five. We had yeah. whip or whip came out on a couple. Like it was, yeah, he was dope. He was lovely as well. Whip or whip. Yeah, man. Incredible. So you had yeah. like, you know, old, young, you, you beatboxing. It was like us all jamming together. It was such a party. It was, it, it was such a, uh, way ahead of his time. We, mm. I, <laughs> I'll tell you mm. one, I'll tell you one more story. <laughs> I, that I don't know if you knew or not, but during that tour, talk to me. Um, it was it was it was rough because we had a full semi with merch, lighting, all the people who were running everything, visuals, um, all the people, everybody, the musicians, mm-hmm. and then we had a trailer behind it with like more of the gear, flat screens, and DVJs and drum sets, and like full, full. Full. Everything was uh-huh, maxed uh-huh. out. And when we booked the tour, certain venues booked me as the DJ. And so oh, they thought shit. I was just going to roll into their venue and yeah. be like, scratch, 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 two turntables, and that was it. And somehow in some of these places, they didn't convey that we had a full production. We had a load in and a load out, and it was a full deal. And I remember we came into one House of Blues and uh somewhere in the middle states i don't know ohio or some shit Mm. but we rolled in and we got there and there was another bus there and we were like oh shit there's another whoever and we rolled in and they had booked me to do their small room upstairs that was like you know whatever just smaller room but it was it, it, it it couldn't it could only fit like maybe six people on the stage it was small and we rolled in and there was a whole other group setting up and everything. And we were like, what's going on? And basically they had Ted Nugent was playing there. No and so, <laughs> so we, we had to, we couldn't do our show. So they had an early show and then we were going to basically, as they were loading out, we were loading in. Oh shit! And it was the worst because those people could give a fuck about us. They were <laughs> like, we're Ted Nugent. And we were like, uh, but <laughs> the craziest shit was that to deal with that. But I remember while we were waiting to like, you know, we had our line of people out the door waiting to come in and see us and their show was happening. And towards the end, it was super like, you know, Ted Nugent, you know, style. But at one point he lit a, a crossbow, a little, a little, uh, not a crossbow, but a bow and arrow. What? He lit the fucking arrow on fire and had a target on the other side of the stage and shot a flaming Stop fucking it. thing into it, into a target and lit it on fire. And we were like, like, it was what just the, the craziest, it was just the craziest moment. And then like, as the, that ended and there was still sort of smoke in the air, like they were moving their shit on and we were like bringing in turntables and drum kits and they were like, get out of the way. Like, it was just like, oh and we were trying God. to, and we had to set up our show, which took like two hours or something. We had to set it up in like half hour and it was just, but yeah, the, the Ted Nugent and somewhere I have a picture of like the marquee house of blues, like Z trip and Ted Nugent. And it was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just fucking hilarious. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's some, somewhere I got, I have some great photos from that. that it's time, amazing. But, yeah, man. God, you can't, I mean, at the time as well, I'm sure <laughs> this whole tour was marred by these moments of DJ booth based nightmares. Oh, but, it was uh, just everything, everything, like everything was, was, uh, we were struggling with, we had a, we had, we had a bus driver at one point who was like, 
just a, like such a dick. He was so like not cool. And he was, and then we had to sort of like, uh, I remember we had to also, he, we were a little afraid that he might be falling asleep. So like one of us had to always stay up with him when we were driving. Cause like, it was like, everyone took a rotating time of like sitting up with the driver. Cause he was the only driver we had and we had to get to the next place. But like, you had to stay awake yeah. to keep him awake. So we we're up there just talking like, Oh yeah. F- fly fishing. Yeah. Great. Like whatever the fuck we were talking about. Oh just, mate, that's uh, horrible. I mean, that's just yeah, it was brutal. That's, that's like the worst tour situation, isn't it? Yeah, there was just, there was a lot of there was a lot of. <laughs> you gotta look back and laugh, don't you? Don't you know? <laughs> oh man, it's you know, but all of it, all of it, learning experiences, all of it, you know, mm. figuring it out, you know, yeah. as you go, and um, and I'm happy that I was able to to to, to just to be just to absorb all that stuff, man. Again, at the end yeah. of the day, like I'm the experiences I've had. Um, you know, I could probably sit down one day and, and do a full on, you know, the the tell all book or the yeah. or the or the podcast or series or something. But it's just funny, man, being able to talk with people who were there around that time. Like you know, you were on yeah, that yeah. bus. You, yeah. you, you. <laughs> that's the shit. People tell me stuff because they were on the bus or they were on the flight, and I would never have remembered doing it. You, it's great having people with you that. That experience that shit too. It's you imagine yeah, being man. like a DJ for all your career and only ever having a company of one, you know, just yourself and nah, miss shit, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad I was able to experience that stuff. I, I it's funny. I I was kind of joking with Charlie Tuna the other day about um we were talking about how crazy things are and you know how he was like, man, I got to find other ways to to you know. Mm. So he's doing art and things like that, and I was jokingly sort of saying to him, but like. Isn't it funny that we, you know, at least we got to, we got to experience the heyday of, you know, mm. again, very, very sort of like, uh, you know, pessimistic sort of uh, dark humor, but like, yeah, we we were there. Remember, remember when they had budgets? Remember when we toured around on tour buses? <laughs> like, you know, that whole kind of thing. You know, mm. just just sort of joking around. But like, there's a moment of like realizing, like, yeah, I to do all these festivals and to do all, have all these experiences. I'm super glad that I was able to do that and. You know, who knows what's around the corner? Yeah. I I feel like eventually it'll level itself out. But you know, just to just to have been able to come this far with it is um it's is humbling and 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 it's amazing. And so, well, the lines to be able to sand. make you know, so you know, yeah. the lines in the sand. So let's see where see what happens afterwards. You know, it's a yeah. it's a revolutionary yeah. thing we're in at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You, you either have to jump over to the other side of the canyon, or you fall in the canyon right now. So. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's sink or swim, but you know, I'm, I don't know, making the best of it like everybody else, man. So it's great to talk to you, dude. I, you know, you I don't mean to like brother. have this go. This is probably the long, probably the longest one. You've no way. Had, but like, but no it's way. Really, it's really good to chop it up, bro. You too. Long overdue, man. Too long. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Call, call the kids sometimes, man. We don't have to do it in front yeah. of everybody. You can just pick up the phone and be like, Hey man. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, you're right. It works both ways, though. I know, but my brother, but anyway. we shall do that. We should do that. And listen, anyone is who will be listening out there right now will totally take the jewels that have come through in this conversation. That question, so many moments, man. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, man. No, I'm I'm happy to be here. And um, and I, the only thing I I just want to plug one thing, just because it's a consistent. The first Thursday of every month, you can catch me on Twitch backslash DJ Z trip and it's uh 7 p.m pacific and i do that with insomniac and that's the first thursday of every month and i might do more things um here and there i used to do every thursday but it's just the first thursday of every month for sure you will see me there tune in and um you know bingo play some music we'll, we'll unwind a little bit we'll put the link down on it as well we'll put the link in the youtube as well word word there we go there we go we got you son my man my man. My brother. DJ Z Chip in the house. Thank you so much, my brother. Block up. Thank you, man. Keller. Love you, bro. Love you too, brother. Killer Keller podcast. Strike it again with Avengers. Don't forget to share, people. You know what time it is. New music and street culture. We are like that. Peace. Peace.